Good afternoon. Uh, my name's Emma Hammond. I'm the uh, PAS platform owner at Fidelity International. Um, before we get started, I think uh, it would be good to kick off with a little bit of background information about what and who Fidelity International is. We are a privately owned company founded in 1969 and we invest over $272 billion of other people's money, uh, ranging from sovereign wealth funds, corporate banks, pension funds. Um, we take our business, as you might expect, very seriously, and we're using our strength in today's marketplace to bring technology together with the needs of our business at the heart of everything that we do driving forward. Fidelity, like any other company, is undergoing transformational change. We are starting to break up the super monolithic mammoth applications. We're starting to break down the very large releases. That doesn't sound good. Okay. Moving away from having siloed technical teams into having poly-skilled engineers and encouraging our business to see that small changes done safely and quickly is where all the action is. Last year, we presented at the European Cloud Foundry Summit. Typically, Fidelity International is very shy. We don't like to talk about what we use, how we do it. Um, so, so for me and for, for our company to speak out about using Cloud Foundry for the first time last year was a major, um, a major achievement, not only personally for, for my team, but also for Fidelity, because it was in fact the first time that we'd spoken publicly that we in fact even use Cloud Foundry. So um, we are, um, uh, last year when we presented at Summit, we talked about how we had deployed multiple Cloud Foundries across multiple data centers using a software-defined network. We now have about 45 applications on our platform, so the next 20 minutes is designed to take that one step further in talking about the culture and the evolution of the team that support the platform. I have to say we are a unique team at Fidelity. Um, we are, and I use this word very carefully, we are, we are a DevOps team, the first DevOps team in Fidelity, responsible for the entire PaaS hardware and software stack with all its associated services. So it's my pleasure to be here today. Um, my thanks go to Pivotal, um, Robbie and Julian, wherever you are, not sure if Julian's in the room, just to say thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. I am in fact wearing the only Pivotal t-shirt that fits, most of them are made for Colin, I think, <laughs> uh, and I'm very proud to wear it. Um, it's been with me to India and Asia, um, and I promote the platform and I promote the partnership that Fidelity have with Pivotal. As global PaaS product owner at Fidelity, I find myself in a difficult position having written the, the title of this talk. Because not only have I got to stand up here, which is actually quite difficult because I haven't had a gin and tonic yet, um, it, I actually have to come clean about a few things, I guess. Okay, so here goes the use of technology. Right, okay, it worked. Okay, so the first confession um, is about three years ago, I was working in an infrastructure and architecture engineering team. And we recognised that a Cloud Foundry PaaS was the next stage in the logical step in further developing our cloud strategy. Um, and also, it enabled us to continue our adoption of cloud-based agile software delivery. We came to this conclusion ahead of our business and our development colleagues. And as such, um, we, I guess, have put the cart before the horse. I'm told typically it happens the other way around. You get the business asking, how can I deliver changes for my product faster into production? How can I realize that business value add faster? And I'm asking you as a developer to find me a solution. Typically, the developer scratches his head and says, well, I need, I need some automation, I need some pipelines, and I need, I need a nice, easy platform to push my code to. So, a lot of our journey, therefore, is very much based on showcasing the benefits of Cloud Foundry, PaaS, and encouraging adoption of the platform to our business and developer colleagues. In reality, the biggest challenge for us as a team that run the platform is not the PaaS itself. It's not Cloud Foundry. It's about encouraging our developers to write good quality, uh, cloudy applications that make the most of what the platform offers so that they, in fact, have a good PaaS experience. So, working with Cloud Foundry, 
and the platform has turned everything that we know and everything that we do as an infrastructure engineering team upside down. Am I doing something wrong that makes that squeak? It's really uncomfortable for your ears. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so, as engineers, we ourselves had to be prepared. That hasn't come up all that well, has it? That's a little bit better. We ourselves had to be prepared to be disrupted. Is it not working at all now? It is still working. Okay, right. To think differently about how we're going to build this platform, but also compelled to want that cloud-based agile software delivery enough to be the actual disruptors within our business and within our company. As you know, PaaS is this evolving ecosystem. It needs nurturing and it's a special entity. If you imagine it in your hand, if you enter into your PaaS journey thinking that you don't need to change, PaaS is very quickly going to suffocate and die. You're going to squash it and kill it. So if uh, you um, are a brownfield site, much like Fidelity, this becomes even more of a challenge. So the first place we started was with a product owner. So being a product owner for a strategic platform that Fidelity wants to run all of its applications on in future, I better know my stuff, right? One might argue that you have to be fully hands-on and understand concepts such as Spring Boot, SSL encryption, Quorum algorithms, cloud controllers, uh, the list is endless. Uh, it's true, I do come from a programming background, but the real kick I get from my job is working in industry that I've been in for the last 20 years now, is from building teams and challenging the status quo. Depending upon how you look at it, some people view me as a troublemaker, some view me as a strategist. Let's turn it again. Okay. It's like a train going by. Okay, so... Um, Okay, uh, uh, having kids kind of screwed with my brain at some point because my brain now can only take so much. I don't know whether it's old age or not. But here's the second confession. I leave the engineering of the technical stuff to those in my team who are far more capable than me in understanding actually how to create the things we need for the platform. Yes, we have an engineering team uh, anchor in the team, which is a swappable role, but I'm not a hands-on engineer. In fact, it's safer that I'm not. My track record for forgetting passwords is indication enough that I need to back off. Um, let others in the team play to their strengths. We are one team, all equal, bringing our own strengths and experience to the table. Mine appears to be buying biscuits, um, which we tend to eat a lot of, uh, listening to uh, someone who has had a particularly bad day, um, and being fiercely protective of the PaaS service um, and my team so that we can flourish amongst disbelievers. So let's talk about disbelievers. Okay. So how does Cloud Foundry change the way that we think about risk, about security and about change? In order to answer this very positive outcome, we have to look at our past. So we have for years, like many companies, been constantly challenged to meet a whole bunch of requirements from a plethora of, of other teams. Change management, 10 minutes left, oh crikey. Right, okay. Uh, change management, security, risk and audit, production support, you, you get the idea. Traditionally, we plan changes days, weeks, sometimes months in advance. Um, we plan these changes with lots of Excel spreadsheets, Gantt charts. Uh, it makes me shiver just thinking about it. Um, we believe that having a two-week lead time on a production change somehow mitigates the risk of that change. Let's go one step further. We make changes at the weekend. It's safer to do that, right? We can still be effective. We're still being agile. To be fair, these teams believe they're doing the right thing and historically have evolved to be the very much uh, safety gatekeepers of our production systems. The safety created by previous experience of system failure, human error, and fear of something going wrong. And perhaps, dare I say it, in some cases, a general lack of mistrust. We call it the scar tissue. The baggage that we carry around with us uh, from place to place. Um, and the baggage that you have to consider when you're moving from one place to another. 
So we, similar to other companies, uh, in address this by employing ITIL experts, application service managers, project managers. We share the responsibility across multiple people in the belief that to do so, we are better protected. We have created a thou shalt not ethos, in fact. We've spent lots of money buying software that safeguards us. And in fact, at some point, we may even have a fear of losing our job for making a, a, a wrong change. So the reality of disbelieving is that change is expensive. There is fear. Our past is all about being fearful of change, and it takes so much energy and cost to realize something in production that sometimes 30 different people have approved and are happy with. We have systems that take weeks, even months, to get agreement to change. In fact, we have some systems that we actually can never change. I'm in disbelief that we've even got ourselves into this position. It's a sad place to be in an otherwise exciting industry where there is so much technological change and in a very competitive marketplace. So the third confession is that I believe. I believe that it is possible to look through the lens in a different way and find an alternative solution that helps people from getting nervous. We start small and simple. There's my lens looking around the other way. Okay, so we start small and simple. We start by encouraging developers to take responsibility for their configuration and code, working in a product owner model. Next, we give them self-service. We start to build trust. We start to trust the technology, trust in its, in its execution, and trust your team. The ability to do this as product owner is probably the most important quality of all. So over the past two years, we've been working to tip the traditional way of working upside down. We have to free our minds, like Nico, ne not Nico, Neo from The Matrix, sorry, Neo. So the fourth confession is that we've sought professional help. Working with our colleagues, uh, like Pivotal and Engineer Better, who've helped to coach us, we've been able to show our colleagues that through common sense and practical use of tooling, we can challenge everything. We can show that change is easy. We can show that it's safe and cheap through simple steps of using Cloud Foundry and pipelines. We can offer self-service to developers in both non-prod and production environments without losing control of our infrastructure, without increasing risk or cost or auditability or security. We can trust Cloud Foundry to scale up and to auto-heal and alert us when something goes wrong. We can upgrade our Cloud Foundry platforms during the business day without any impact. This we even do without asking any of our application owners for approval. We offer the most secure, most up-to-date system at Fidelity because of this. We make production firewall changes during the day without a change ticket, and we also give it to self-service to our developers. It is no longer our configuration to manage for them. We give self-service to developers and product owners to deploy their code in all environments. It is no longer our deployment to manage for them. We advocate a product team philosophy as the key to unlocking high-quality, responsive cloud application and behavior to have the best PaaS experience. And moving away from admin tasks driven by service and change tickets, we can spend time engineering cool stuff that we open source. We run multi-tenant shared platform on shared hardware. Uh, you can trust Cloud Foundry to do what it says on the tin, which is happy days. So we are showing through example, following best development practices, that high quality code, robust pipelines, and good te logical test coverage, when combined with automation, innovation, and self-service, are powerful allies when challenged by disbelievers. The reality is that we shouldn't have to dodge the bullets. If a developer and a product owner is willing to take responsibility for their app, it becomes a winning combination to successful cloud adoption. So the fifth confession, I'm rapidly running out of time. We do as developers do, I'm hoping I can maybe have five more minutes, is that all right, thank you. So we do as developers do, we eat our own dog food. Um, might not quite look like that, but I thought it was quite glamorous. Uh, okay, so we take responsibility for the platform and enable it to be serviced using automated pipelines. We treat infrastructure as code through test-driven development. In fact, 90% of all we do is done through that process, through pairing. We're very quickly able to share ideas and knowledge, deliver high-quality products, and keep our team size tight to a small and equal number. 
whilst continually delivering MVPs, refactoring our code as we learn how and what our customers need. So how does Cloud Foundry and APAS change the way that we look at building teams? I was lucky enough to choose my team, causing trouble, scoured fidelity for like-minded people that might not necessarily have all of the technical skills that were needed to run a PaaS platform, but in fact had the right attitude. They left their uh, scar tissue, their baggage, at the door. They were lean travellers, the ones that really wanted to make a difference. I've watched the team grow, every member actually being genuinely excited about new technology, learning new skills and working in a DevOps manner to achieve a high quality platform. There's a but here though. Uh, Rome wasn't built in a day and transformational change as we all know is very challenging. And there are occasions um, that we're just tempted to walk away. Um, a small voice in an otherwise crowded room. So the sixth confession is all about patience. Today, every company is currently at a different level of its cloud adoption and agile development maturity. Some people get it, some people don't. The reality is that a company such as Fidelity is changing. It might take us a while to achieve, but we've made a really good start. And Cloud Foundry, being part of the community and through building partnerships with others, has greatly helped us and will continue to help us on our journey. Uh, the thing that would greatly also increase our levels of patience, um, the empathy that you need uh, whilst you're trying to successfully evangelise in, in, in a company is a ping pong table. Uh, I thought it was there, but it's, it's in a, is it doubt? It's normally there. Yeah, I thought it was there, okay. So maybe that's an extra confession because we, we don't have one yet. Um, so I'm drawing to a close. Um, I guess my penultimate confession is that it's okay. It's okay to get things wrong and it's okay to change our minds. This is very anti-pattern to a traditional working environment. If you're strong enough to admit that you get it wrong and you're strong enough to learn from it, you can build that strength because you have the knowledge to adapt. If we accept it's okay to change our minds and we end up delivering something quicker, as we made a decision based on the information we had at that time, we made the decision. In this way, we can try new things quickly and we can learn. This alternative way of working gives us tremendous agility, enabling us as a team to switch tracks quickly and cheaply. So my last confession is make it count. Perhaps a strange one in certainly my sphere of uh, working because we're supposed to be professional at all times is that we actually have fun um, and that we are comfortable to have a laugh. Um, some of us spend more time at work than we do with our families and at home so we really ought to make it count. If you're not having fun you're probably in the wrong job. So it seems customary to end a lot of presentations uh, within this way so I'm, I'm going to follow suit. If you like what I've been saying and felt inspired to come and work with us, then we're hiring. <laughs> <laughs>